Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Good to see everyone. Uh, my name is Tyler LeCompte. I'm uh, one of the organizers here uh, for One Million Cups. I see a lot of familiar faces. Any first timers? If you are, raise your hand. Welcome. Hi, round of applause. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, for, for you guys and for your benefit, for those online, uh, One Million Cups is part of a uh, national entrepreneurial educational uh, format. Uh, presented in 189 plus cities uh, nationally every Wednesday, 9 a.m. locally, uh, and uh, it allows entrepreneurs like ours today uh, to present their story, uh, some of their challenges, some of their successes, uh, what they've learned, hopefully, uh, as well as get some feedback on their ideas. So uh, today we're going to welcome William McCluskey. He's uh, all the way from Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, William uh, got in last night, and uh, so we were able to catch up a little bit, but he's here to present Proper Channel, which he started in 2013. Uh, he's working to improve how organizations and individuals share expertise, uh, and he's a huge fan of tacos and now Tia Cori's, yeah, uh, really. because, uh, you know, that's where you go. Uh, without further ado, William McCluskey. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's absolute pleasure to go to a spot in Florida that actually has beaches. Uh, Tallahassee, I'd like to tell everyone who's not familiar with it, uh, when they're like, well, Tallahassee, yeah, I've heard of it, where is it? It's like, well, it's the armpit of Florida. And, and the weather feels like the armpit as well. Hot and humid all day long, and it's just, yeah. So coming out here was an absolute treat. So a little bit about me. Uh, this will be the least interesting part of the whole demonstration and the whole talk today. Uh, I've done just about everything. Uh, a prior boss used to have a game, and it was, uh, what has William done? And he'd basically say a random thing, and I was like, well, actually, I have done that before. Um, the quick highlights, uh, got my uh, MBA, and yes, that is Warren Buffett and I holding hands. Uh, he's a great guy, bought me a milkshake. Um, yeah, just absolute sweetheart. Uh, tells the same jokes over and over again, and they're just as funny every single time. Uh, that was because of Boston College. Uh, decided to get my MBA uh, in product and brand management. I picked product and brand management because it was entrepreneurship, but with data. Uh, and I'm a big data guy. Uh, I also uh, started and ran multiple Ultimate Frisbee Leagues. Um, it is a wonderful sport. It's a sport of pure passion uh, because the interesting thing about a Frisbee is it flies. And so it doesn't just you know, perform on gravity. So it's up in the air longer. So if you have heart, if you have stamina, you can always push yourself more and you can always reach your goal. And so it, it, for anyone who's really just eager about something, man, does it feed, feed that heat, <clears throat> feed that itch. Uh, I also taught scuba diving at Florida State University. I uh, also ran their scuba program. And oh, seven off. <laughs> well, there's probably a few of us in here. <laughs> Don't want to start a fight. Um, but by all means, one of the things that that really taught me is you know, knowledge transfer, teaching someone a, a new skill, showing them a new world, showing them things that they didn't know were even available or, or, or even existed. It was just, man, lights you up. Uh, and uh, I give back to communities. I'm a big supporter of communities. That's me. Uh, I'm on the board of the Institute for Nonprofit Innovation and Excellence, basically continuing education for nonprofits. So of all of this, you really notice one thing, knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. I spent so much time in my life trying to get information and trying to learn new things and learning from people like yourselves, and that's actually why I'm here today, is to hear your feedback, to hear your ideas. Because man, when you can leverage a room of expertise, the things that you can accomplish are just amazing. So now we're getting into Proper Channel. Uh, what I like to say about Proper Channel is just like what I've tried to do in my life, is I like to make uh, myself smarter, or well, Proper Channel, it makes your organizations smarter. Well, what in the world does that mean? What's a smarter organization? Well, just like a smarter person, a smarter organization does more with less, they make less mistakes, and most importantly, they're the most competitive one. And they keep on learning, and they always stay more competitive. So what makes us not smart? Did a big research study. It said we started Proper Channel in 2013. Well, research started in 2013. Uh, we did a tremendous amount of research, reading everything out there about knowledge transfer, bureaucracy, what's slowing us down. Two big pillars really stuck out of what makes us not smart. The first one, knowledge loss. A lot of you probably saw this in the news. It was a CEO who passed unexpectedly. He was the only one in the company who had a password to the Bitcoin uh, operations. And so, boom, there you go. $200 million that they'll never be able to get back. This is actually a small knowledge loss problem. State of Florida, we're losing about a billion dollars because of the uh, because of the baby boomers retiring. 
We have all these people who are retiring and they're taking all that institutional knowledge with them and there's no method to keep that in the organization. Uh, all sorts of great horror stories. Uh, over at General Mills, they lost a maintenance worker. She retired and it took them about 11 months in delayed orders and $2 million to reinvent the way that she balanced the brushing machines. One person, $2 million. This sort of stuff happens all the time, and every single one of you probably can point to someone in one of your organizations and say, if they left, we'd be in a lot of trouble. It's time we stop denying this and putting it off until the emergency happens, and we actually plan for it. You know, just like retirement. You can get to retirement and have a great retirement if you actually plan for it and take steps all along the way. The other problem is inefficiency. Inefficiency is a secret and silent killer because you're busy all day. You feel like you're getting a lot done, but then your competitor does it for half the cost and a quarter of the time. What? How, how is that even possible? Well, that's the, that's the big problem is when you feel really busy, when you feel overloaded, that's when it's time to actually take a break and how can I do this a little bit better? Here's one of the big problems with, with organizations today is literally for the past century, uh, every business guru has been saying, process, process, process. Your process is how you are competitive. Your process is the most important part of your business. All, all these different things. And how organizations respond to that is, oh, process is important. So let me put one person in charge of getting all the processes of our entire organization. And then that one person is also going to be responsible for training everyone in our organization. Can they even say the names of everyone in your organization? No, they're not doing the work every single day either. So how can, they, how can they be experts at everything? How can they document everything when, they don't even, when they're not even aware of what's being done? After we did the research, we really sort of noticed this interesting thing. It didn't matter how many steps were in the process. It mattered how well the process was communicated. So a perfect example, is you can open up, when, when we were all kids, we had the activity books with the mazes. We opened up this very complex, act, you know, this very complex maze and it was ruined because some other little brat drew the line on it in a pen. And suddenly it was too easy. Well, why can't we make organizational tasks and processes too easy? We've already figured it out. We figured it out almost every single day, but instead of documenting that information and giving it to the person who needs to do the task in the future, we just throw it away. Oh, I'll, I'll write it down when I get it perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. Perfect doesn't matter. Because if I just know your path, I can get through it in a heartbeat. So what we're talking, talking about is how do we scale knowledge transfer? So right now, roughly 80% of organizational training is done through informal knowledge transfer. That's you sticking your head in your manager's office and, hey, hey Susan, how do I do travel reimbursement again? Two big problems there. Now it's two people who aren't getting work done because you just interrupted your manager, and now she is going to tell you what she remembers is the process for travel reimbursement. So she is effectively playing the telephone game, going back to all those kidding examples. <clears throat> she's, going to, she's not trying to give you misinformation, but now you've just injected misinformation into your business, and what happens in the telephone game? You end up doing something completely different than what you're actually supposed to be doing. So what we've done at Proper Channels, we did the research to, let's, let's get away from this one-on-one, -on -one, this informal stuff, and let's even get rid of the one-to-many, these sit down and listen to this training, uh, listen to this uh, training instructional, and then go off to your work and then forget 90% of it. No, 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 no. Let's find out a way to give people information when they need it and share it among many to many. Scaling. So anyone who needs that information has access to that information on demand when it's immediately relevant so they actually pay attention to it. The first step is it really does need to be documented. If it's not documented, if it's in someone's head, you're, you're going to be stuck in reinventing it every single time. The second step is the person who needs the information needs to be able to find it and they need to be able to find it quickly. And the final one, the tip of the iceberg, the one that really sets us apart is usability. If I give you a 1,200 page manual and say it's in the manual, are you gonna look at that manual? No, it's, a, it's absolutely irrelevant to you. Plus you're gonna get to the one section that said that is on the process you want and it's out of date or it just has one little clip is, you know, uh, travel reimbursement's important, talk to your HR person. Talk to the HR person, they just gave me the manual. You get into these circular traps. So we fix all three of them. Let's see it in action. 
You guys have probably never seen Proper Channel before. Immediately, I bet you know where to start on this travel reimbursement guide. It's that big, pretty green shape. Intuitive, uh, approachable, and authoritative. But here's the problem with visual organization. It's great for overview, terrible for instruction. What in the world does requesting travel mean? It's not enough. So again, making it approachable, making it familiar, we did something that feels obvious. Well, I want more information on that. What do we do? We click on it. As common and as familiar as this feels, these two camps hated each other so much. It was actually fun reading the research because the, the shade that they threw at each other was just glorious. Um, just embedded together. We're actually patent pending on this. So have your immediately relevant instruction, unlimited, rich media enabled instruction, videos, screenshots, whatever you need, right there on just that specific step. So I don't need to know everything about the whole process, I can just go to whichever step I need help on, and boom, there you go. So quickly orient to the step I need, then there's my training. Then, because it's on the web, why not give them an extra little bit of help? Go ahead and click on it, there's your actual resources. So, we tell you exactly what to do in exactly the right order. We give you rich, media, detailed instructions on that specific step. Then we even give you the resources. If I told you what to do, how to do it, and give you the resources, what couldn't you do? It'd be easy, it'd be, again, child's play. This is Nikolai, he's six years old. He was making guides on proper channel with less than five minutes of training. I promise if he can do it, anyone in your organization can do it. Here's what really sets us apart. Your standard documentation and process gathering and all those things, three separate engagements. So first, you'll hire a consultant, they'll go in and they'll discover what you're even doing. Then they go off into a black hole and they do the documentation all in isolation. Then they go back and they distribute the information by giving it to the management team and roughly about half the time it gets implemented, half the time it doesn't. It doesn't work. With proper channel, you discover document and distribute to the entire team in one effort. Then we go again one step further. What did everyone say about process for the last half century? Continuous process improvement. Always make it better. There's no such thing as perfect because the world around us is changing and we need to be smarter and keep on improving. Small incremental change over time makes a tremendous difference. Well, if everyone knows where the documentation is, if everyone has access to the documentation, if everyone's using the documentation as a work guide, well, if they find a better way to do it, why not let them get in there and improve it? And that's exactly what we do. After a short bit of time, not only do you have the maze documented, but you start getting rid of the twists and turns. This is a real customer example. This was the document as is. That's what it looked like after a week. If you're a new employee, which one is easier? Which one do you think you can do day one of your hire? <laughs> Imagine that, day one employees actually contributing to your bottom line. Mind-blowing. Let's talk about more mind-blowing things. Here's the Museum of Florida History. Their volunteer coordinator is spending roughly 80% of her time every single day answering the same three questions. We go in there, we help document her, uh, her, her guides for those three processes. Now it's down to 20% of her day. Now she can do her reports. Now she can engage with uh, volunteers. Now she can do all these other things that she never thought she'd ever have time for. This is um, Florida Campus Compact. This is that travel reimbursement. How that guide even happened, I went in there to do something like this. I was gonna show them what the product was. They were yelling at each other in front of this new person, myself, for two and a half hours. Finally, I was like, hey, I, I've got an idea. How about we make a guide right now? <laughs> and so I opened it up. Hey guys, can somebody just tell me one step? We mapped it out step by step. It took about 10 minutes. Two and a half hours of yelling, 10 minutes of discovery, document, and distribute. I come back six weeks later, how's, how's travel reimbursement going? What do you mean? I was like, well, you had a big problem then. Oh, it's easy now. <laughs> Fighting, not getting a single one through on the first try for over six years, took easy. Uh, Tallahassee Memorial Hospital, hospital their, uh, their nurse trainer, had a major problem with duplicated tests. The, the way that their IT system, their, their blood testing system is set up, if there's a test that needs to be done periodically, so every single day, once a, you know, once a week, anything along those lines, it will always say pending. These nurses who are overworked and tired, they go in, they see the list of tests that need to be due, they see pending, so they go and take that blood. Some people have been tested for the same thing four times in one day. 
how do we fix that? So she did a brain dump. She was like, these are all the different things that nurses have to remember, and oh my gosh, it's so overwhelming. Hold on a second. How about, how about we focus on just drawing the blood? How do we do that? What do we do before that? What are the things you need to know? We go from medical errors to medical ease. Golden Lighting, they, uh, they sell things like this, these, these chandeliers for, uh, you know, for corporate businesses and, and you know, sort of not the $10,000 chandelier, but the couple hundred dollar chandeliers and lighting fixtures. They had an order duplication problem. They have one email address that gets you know, orders at goldenlighting.com and you have a bullpen of between, you know, uh, if, if it's a busy season, it's around 40 people and a lot of those are brand new hires. Um, slow season, it's usually about 10 to 15. They were about to spend tens of thousands of dollars to build some sort of custom IT solution that would reduce, not eliminate, reduce the number of duplicate orders. Because what would happen is someone would take the order and then it takes a while between, usually about three minutes or less, for it to distribute, okay, this one has been open to all the other screens in the bullpen. We were showing a proper channel and right away, one of their people was like, oh my gosh, this can solve the order duplication problem. They made this guide in about 10 minutes and suddenly that went to zero because they put a manual workaround. So when they open that order, they, they just simply say out loud, I pulled this order. And whoever's about to open a new order, they hear that. Manual workarounds are real. Humanware, what humans do to get work done is real. And so often managers and, and IT professionals and all these people, they think, no, we've got to automate everything. Well, don't automate until you have a nice tight process. Then you go in and then you start doing some really impactful things. <coughs> we drink our own Kool-Aid. This, uh, I thought I was doing really great because uh, I could onboard an intern in, in one day. Uh, I made myself a proper channel guide, even though I'm the only one who's ever going to onboard uh, marketing interns. Next thing you know, after a couple iterations, it went from about six hours to 20 minutes. Because I knew exactly what to do, in exactly the right order, and I linked to all my resources. No confusion, no thinking, just execution. Imagine how much more relaxed I was getting that intern on. We literally have interns join our team and finish their first project all in their first day. Who has employees that actually give contribution to their bottom line on their first day. You can do that with a proper channel. The old way is messy. You have to look through all sorts of files. We like to call it the Google swamp, even if it's your own shared file and things like that. The new way makes it simple, it's approachable, and it's easy to get work done. What we're looking for is we have these individual cases of, of great impact, but it's almost too good to be true. So what we're looking for is organizations with more than 20 people to do a pilot program. We want that, we want to, that validating customer to say, yep, we implemented this in proper channel, and next thing you know, we decreased our errors by you know, X, Y, Z percent, we increased our revenue by this percent, we decreased employee turnover by this percent. We, we, need, that, we need that flagship customer to, to tell everyone else, yeah, it's, not, it's a lot more than just a good idea. Thank you guys so much, I'm William McCluskey, and hopefully uh, make you guys a little bit smarter. All right. Another round of applause for William. That was good stuff, right? Yeah. Wonderful way to start your day. That one, All right. First round of questions. Who's got something? All right. Jenny? Should I introduce yourself? <laughs> Hi, I'm Jenny Nazak. I'm involved, among other things, in helping to educate people about natural capital and ecosystem services. And this is so exciting from the standpoint of companies, but also perhaps from a community standpoint. When a small business is lost in a community that has a thin landscape, it's hard, succession's difficult. Succession could become easy. It could be like a virtual apprenticeship exactly. that's streamlined. It's good for like the rainforest, business ecosystem model, people, there's enough trust so people can share across. It's real exciting. And congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, she nailed it right on the head. Uh, so right now we're just talking about our uh, private enterprise version. So everything here is a silo. You, you buy accounts for your employees and only your employees have access to your processes because again, that's your competitive advantage. You don't want your customers seeing that. You don't want your competitors getting in there and messing with it. So walled garden. 
We also have a free public tool, visible to everyone, editable by everyone. Think of it like Wikipedia, but on how to get work done. So by all means, it's 100% free. You don't even need to make an account. Uh, no advertisements, anything along those lines. Properchannel.co, and it really is .co, or startup, we can't afford the M. So by all means, feel free to get on there. And if there's anything that you guys wish other people knew, make a guide. If there's anything that you're tired of explaining to other people, make a guide. That, that one with the Museum of Florida History, that's actually live on our public tool. Because, uh, so the Museum of Florida History over in Tallahassee, just about every fourth grade class in, in Florida comes there for a field trip. So think of how many fourth grade teachers need to ask for, how do I schedule that field trip? Uh, how do I get the lesson plans for that field trip? The thing that blew Bonnie away is when, when she finally had these things made, she'd get an email, hey, how do I do this? And in her signature and in her auto, uh, out of office reply, it would say, are you looking to do these three things? Here you go, here are the guides. And so she'd get the panicked email from, you know, classic teacher panicked email, just, you know, sort of vomiting words at you. Oh my gosh, I've been on your website, I can't figure it out, blah, 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 blah. And then like three minutes later, oh, never mind, figured it out, thanks. She was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it was like, finally, help and resources. One of my other favorite ones that's on the, the public tool, it's actually a lot of really good ones, but uh, one of the first ones that we did early, early, early stage testing, one of my buddies who's a CTO over in a, a company in Boston, uh, every week, without fail, his mom would call him and say, how do I do this with the computer again? <laughs> and so he made her a guy. And he was like, oh my gosh, I'll give you all my money, thank you so much. And it's like, this is the best thing that's ever happened. My mom doesn't call me anymore. <laughs> Awesome. Hi, I'm um, Michelle James. I work for Space Coast Credit Union. I'm a business coach for a small business. Um, so I would love for you to just even come to our organization. Absolutely. I've had the same, it just it's ironically, um, I was locked out of a platform yesterday. There's one person that knows the platform. Um, IT tried to handle it, they couldn't handle it, and they're like, you got an email, so and so. And I'm like, oh my God, she just unlocked some credentials. And she's, she's even moved positions, nobody's been trained under her. So it's just mind blowing. I've been shut down on what I've been able to, be, able to do. And just, but what I love about it is I love workflows. So even, um, it reminds me of Venmo, I don't know what platform you guys use with the boxes and the squares and things like that. Um, so what I wanna say also is, so can you talk about how you come and do the consulting process a little bit? And then two part question, Talk about how you're inspired to do this, um, some of your struggles, how you're getting the word out, and all that good stuff. So, um, right now we're software only. We have partnerships with consultants, but um, what, one of the things that we really want is uh, consulting partners. Um, one of the amazing things about this is we've literally had day one ROI on our projects. You know, a $10,000 consulting engagement is rather small. Well, day one, we have them sitting down and doing documentation and it's already distributed to the whole team. Just seeing the process mapped out with a simplified workflow, oh, I get it. Oh, no, no, that's not how it is. You'll literally get multiple iterations while you're making it. And, and that sounds like it's counterproductive and takes a lot of time. No, 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 no. What you've done is you've gotten rid of the miscommunication of those first few rounds. And it all happens literally in a matter of minutes. Most of these, you notice I said about 10 minutes. We're not kidding. It really is that fast. Because you have multiple people all looking at the same thing, and when multiple people see it and multiple people get it, man, it just clicks. So what we'd love to do is partner with consultants. They go in and do their standard consulting engagement. They just deliver using proper channel. And what we hope happens is you do one, two small implementations, and then on that third small implementation, so it'd be things like how to onboard a new hire, uh, how to fix uh, your sales process, then on the third one, it's like, hey, you know, we already have proper channel on multiple things. How about do a full scale implementation? Now you've got hopefully a couple hundred thousands or, or a couple million dollars, depending on the size of the company, to do a sort of train the trainer thing. And then you come in regularly and you help them with the documentation. But we did really design this tool so that the entry level employees can make the guides themselves. Because trying to put all the documentation and all the knowledge capture onto just one person or just one group, it doesn't work. We all know it doesn't work. So it's, let's stop, keep on blaming the broken system, and let's do something different. Literally everything in process improvement has always said you need to involve your entire team. 
Show me one process improvement organization and mindset that actually invites them into improving the process. Just doesn't happen. And uh, how did this happen? Pain. Um, you know, that's, that, that's the most common entrepreneurial, you know, starting point is, oh my gosh, I'm going to pull my hair out. Um, you know, that, uh, in each one of those You're many really, different yeah, things that I've really done. Yeah, very complicated. <laughs> uh, so each one of these different things. Uh, perfect example, so applying to Boston College, uh, something like 50,000 people apply every single year. Every single year, 50,000 people have to figure out how to apply. They, they don't have a list, give me this, give me this, give me this. No, I have to jump around to literally like 20 different websites and it was buried into student life, it was buried into you know this, and it was buried into this, then it was financial aid, then it was this. Come on, really? Like, if you want to increase your applicants, if you want to have better applicants, make it easier to apply. And, and why is it that 50,000 people have to reinvent that wheel? Just like driver's licenses. We all have driver's licenses in here, and every single one of us has a bad DMV story. That's absurd. Let's, let's close that knowledge loss loop. Uh, Frisbee. When I started the Frisbee League in the city of Tallahassee, I literally was in a catch-22 state where I could not schedule field space. Um, you got, like, to schedule field, like, I went to all the right agencies, I did all these things, and no, uh, oh, you have to talk to this person, you talk to that person, you have to talk to this person. Guys, you're, you're pointing fingers at each other. It's like, you schedule softball, you schedule this, you schedule this, how did they do it? Oh, well, <laughs> Okay, and then they finally let us get field space. But it was like, it's amazing how many organizations don't know their own processes. That's actually been our biggest barrier for implementation, is we've worked with a couple of state agencies, and they make jokes, we, we need proper channel to buy proper channel. And it's just like, haha, -ha, funny, but you guys still aren't giving us money, and I'm pulling my hair out for six months. Because like, why in the world do we have this big knowledge loss problem? It's because we have bad tools. And so I, I got just furious. You could tell the rage. <laughs> and it was, and I was like, I'm going to fix it. And we tried so hard to get other people to fix it. Uh, you know, hiring outside consultants and all these other things. And finally, it was like, no one else is going to do this. Because you have these two factions who hated each other, the, the visualization people and the manual people. Uh, then you have all the learning management tools, learning management software. There's this huge boom right now. And, and they'll give you these fancy videos that tell you, Sexual harassment is bad. Ethics is important. Thanks. But, but what happens if I have a sexual harassment issue or if I have an ethics complaint? Who specifically do I talk to? What forms do I specifically fill out? You know, isn't, isn't that important? And also, how does every employee ever get through learning management software? They hit play, they go and do their work, and then they guess at the answers until they get it right. That's not training. That, that's cover your ass. You know, it's, let's let's actually get people to wrap up and get things done. Wait, I got a question for you. Thanks. Um, the issue, one of the issues I hear you saying is people need the tool. People at the operational level need the tool. It sounds like the challenge is identifying the return on investment for the folks who have to write that check to get your your solution in there. What I really have a question about is, what's the operational process? You have this particular flow chart that I see. Yeah. What, what, do, you, what do we actually do? Do we sit at a, a terminal and build this flow in your app, or yep. how does that happen? Sure, absolutely. So actually, this is a, a, the best example. Um, we want everyone in your organization to have this, and it'll be like desk guides. So when I'm doing work, now I have a specific guide to walk me through the steps so I get perfect process adherence every single time. And the thing that we see is the employees want to use this because it gives them, it gives them all, the remind, you know, all the reminders, all the little hints, and it links them to the resources. So it's faster to use the guide. Then they're doing it the right way every single time, and then if they find an error, if they find an improvement, there's a little edit button, and they hop in there, and they, and they improve it. So have, have the screen open. When you're doing your task, you use our upper channel guide every single time. Um, 
it's a web application. It's accessible on any type of screen, mobile, uh, mobile responsive. So right now, you guys can go to properchannel.co and start looking through various guides. You can't make guides on mobile because the user interface is so much smaller. Um, and we were worried about you know mistakes and you know all that stuff on the, on the input. And it's also not been a, a big issue. When people are on their phones, they're usually in the execution mode as well. Hi, my name is Clarissa Chase. I'm with International Cultural Exchange Services. We're looking for families to host uh, exchange students for the school year. I am a, a veteran, and I used to work at the VA. This is what they need. Absolutely. I was working there for 11 years, and the frustration is mind-blowing. That has led me to working for ICES full-time now. I'm still a patient there, but they need this yeah. really bad. Right. I'm sure there's a bunch of veterans in here that can agree with me. Okay. Yeah, and, and you nailed it right on the head. Is it's they don't even know their own processes. And one of the things that we also saw that Bonnie really called out with the Museum of Florida History, there's about seven steps that someone has to go through to become a volunteer. And what happened is the potential volunteers, the people who love the museum so much that they wanted to give their time for free, would get mad. And it's like, it feels like we're getting the runaround. No, 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 you're just on step two. You know, there's seven steps. When they could see that there's seven steps, it was, it was the maze. It was, oh, I, I see a month right here. I'm, I'm gonna be right there in a little bit, no big deal. So just getting rid of the anxiety and the frustration of no one's helping me makes a tremendous difference, and then we're not losing something like 21 veterans every single uh, day to suicide. Because now they know to, where to go for the help. And you look at any public support tool, one of the biggest things is what's even, what's even available to them? Most of the time, they don't even know that there's these great programs that will help them with their problems. And all the research shows, the sooner you get people into support programs, the faster they come out, the better they come out, and the less cost it is to society. So get them into the programs faster. Get them through the maze faster. It benefits all of us. William, um, I've been involved in entrepreneurial business development forever. Okay? And I'm, I'm interested in how you started the company, how you funded the company, who's we, and ultimately, what's your goal, what's your exit? Sure, uh, how we started the company, uh, originally about uh, six months of hard research, uh, you know, doing research, you know, uh, uh, the term for the aggregate research study is escaping me right now, but basically see what's out there, see what's already existing. Then, uh, okay, we got a good idea, let's, let's do an MVP, let's do some basic testing, um, polish it out. Uh, business structure, we were a C Corp, I was up in Boston originally. Um, when I was up in Boston, we thought it was gonna be you know, standard, standard tech startup. Uh, you know, get some early angel capital, run it up, prove it, then go and get you know, a seed round, then try to scale it, you know, all, all your standard things. So it made sense, you know, get a seed round, uh, become a C Corp so that foreign investment can happen as well. You pretty much need to do that if you're gonna do venture capital because you don't know where your investors are from. Um, then I got really sick. Um, one of the things that really sort of drove this is the process and inefficiency in the hospital. Uh, the hospital made repeat, repeated errors over and over and over again. My favorite one is when I was admitted for about nine hours, I had different residents, so not doctors, residents, the students walk in. So you hit your head and started throwing up? <laughs> nope, nope, I've got a fever over 104, uh, going above 105 a couple of times. Uh, I'm chronically dehydrated. It's like, you need to break my fever right now. Uh, oh, oh, well that's not what the form says. So after about nine hours, they give me a CAT scan of my brain because clearly I hit my head and started throwing up. <laughs> and, then, and then just mistake after mistake after mistake. And they basically ruined most of my internal systems. Luckily I got some, uh, some uh, rental income. Uh, I've got some real estate investment. And so, okay, well let's slow down and let myself heal. While I was letting myself heal, we were bootstrapping this and just slowly improving it. It was okay, I can't hit the gas pedal because I have physical limitations. So let's, let's just slowly keep adding to it. Uh, so we kept it as the C-Corp, uh, just you know, invested as little as possible, just sort of keep it running. That's one of the main reasons we built the public tool first, is to have more testing and more feedback from various different uses. Uh, 
finally, you know, I'm starting to get a whole lot healthier, uh, able to travel again, able to work again, and so now it's okay. Now, now let's really validate this and let's really scale it. Um, anything I, I missed? Oh, exit strategy. You know what? I, I, I'm not a purist. Uh, I, I feel whatever is most appropriate. Um, I think this really looks like something that someone's going to acquire. Um, it, it, you know, it, it's a great tool to add to a consulting group. You know, oh yeah, we we can deliver superior consulting using our you know our unique and patented uh, you know uh, software tool. Plus, then they get incredible revenue <laughs> over you know uh, every consultant engagement would love to have incredible revenue without having to send a consultant to that organization. Is there any IP behind it? Uh, patent pending, yeah. And uh, you know that process for technology right now is so overwhelmed in the patent office. Um, and so that's a gr great thing, you know, it takes them a very long time to say no. <laughs> uh, but uh, by, by all means, looking through the patent searches over and over again, there really isn't anything like this. Um, that doesn't mean we'll get it, but we're working with a couple of good patent attorneys and, and we think we've got a decent job. Is there a need to have patent? Dep uh, so only if we don't scale fast enough. Uh, if, if I can raise it, because then, you know, people can copy it and, you know, and do all these things. That being said, as simple and as straightforward as this feels, we really did shop around and try to get other people to do this. And they were like, oh my God, no, that graphical interfaces don't operate like that. And so most of the quotes we got back were north of $5 million in development costs. Um, so, yeah, and you just cracking it. it. Congratulations. Thank you. It definitely didn't cost us five million, but boy, yeah, it was it wasn't cheap either. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, we we think that, and I mean, we're already talking to people who are interested in and in possibly licensing it for for their IP solutions and delivering uh, a couple of uh, you know straight across the board because they see this, and almost anyone who is trying to make a change, they see this and it's like this is how we make it actually implement. So it could be a okay. Way. So we got a next question back. Exactly. Hi, I'm Becky Spencer with Spencer Nonprofit Solutions. Um, obviously, I work with nonprofits. This would be amazing for them. <laughs> but is it affordable for them? Yeah, uh, it's dirt cheap. Um, so it's $15 per user per month. And so if you're already doing lunch and learns, it's less than buying lunch. Uh, then on top of that, you know, for the implementation, for the partners who agree to actually do it and give us the data and things like that, price isn't going to be the barrier. But we're willing to work with people. Okay. And the free tool is absolutely free. Round of applause for William and Robert. Thank you. 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 Thank you.